Hey, how are you guys doing? I hope you've had a great week. I know I've had a pretty good week, and this weekend for me is going to be awesome. So by the time you guys have watched this, I will probably already be back at home, uh, but I'm going out. One of my friends has his bachelor weekend coming up. He's getting married. I can't believe it. Um, so we get to go celebrate uh, with him over the weekend, and I cannot wait for that. Well, I have a message for you guys today, and I feel like this is something that can really help us um, with the different stages of life that we may find ourselves in. Sometimes we feel trapped, and we can't feel like we can find a way out, and I want to talk to those people specifically today. So I hope you enjoy the message, and I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. So do any of you guys play golf? I know I, I, I love golf. I don't play nearly as much as I should. You guys, if I, here, I'm just going to grab something real quick, use it as a little sermon illustration. I know it's kind of early for a sermon illustration, but, but yeah, I'm just going to use this to try to explain some stuff about the message that I have for today. So how can it be that somebody else could have the same club can have the same body, can have the same outfit, can have the same lineup as me, but that they are able to, now I'm going to try not to hit anything here, we'll see how this goes, they are not able, or I am not able to hit it as far as they are. Golf is all about the swing. And everything I need to be a good golf player, I already have. I want to introduce to you guys the title for today's message. I'm going to call it, It's Already There. Because everything that I need for a good golf swing is already there. I have a functioning body. I have a functioning brain. I have the golf clubs, I have the balls that are in my um, golf bag right here, I got the tees. And so everything that I need for a powerful and long drive is already there. It's already there. If I was in the church, I would have you guys touch your neighbors, sit down and say it's already there. I'm going to talk about uh, a little verse, a little set of verses in 2 Kings 6, verses 15 through 19. So while you guys are flipping there real quick, I just want to give a little bit of background. So Elisha has gotten in trouble with the Syrian Empire, and now the Syrian Empire is after him, and they have surrounded the city walls that he is in. And now, this is what it says. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, Behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, Elisha said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened his eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Somebody say, it's already there. It's already there. And when the Syrians came down against Elisha, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Please strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, This is not the way, this is not the city. I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. Now, there's three points I want to give us today. The first is perspective. We need to have the right perspective. We need to be praying for the right perspective. Because as much as I want to be Elisha in this story, where I can say, don't worry, the God who we worship, the God who we look to has a plan, and I want to show it to you. A lot of the times I'm like the servant that says, dude, you are crazy. There is two of us versus an army of Syrians who are around us. How in the world do you see a way out? I'm, I'm that person a lot of the times, and I think a lot of us can get that way. Maybe it's schoolwork that's overwhelming. Maybe it's a relationship that's overwhelming. Whatever it is, maybe it's your job, whatever it is, 
Sometimes the things in our life can get overwhelming and in the perspective only shifts through prayer. Elisha prayed that he would have the perspective and that he would be able to give the perspective to the servant who was not able to see it. And then once his eyes were open, he saw what was already there. It's already there. The power is already there. The protection is already there. The uh, provision is already there. It's a matter of perspective. Next is the plan. There's a plan that follows, and I want to show you guys the plan, because Elisha said, do not be afraid. There's a plan. Do not be afraid. You're only afraid when there is no plan for the thing that you face. Do not be afraid, for there are more with us than are with us. Them. We need some people in our life to show us the plan of God that is already there. Now, I also want to show you something about the plan because Elisha prayed for the blindness of the Syrians. And, and the text says this. So he struck them with blindness, he meaning God. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. In accordance with the prayer. Some of us get angry because our prayers seem to not have the accordance, right? Have the outcome that we are looking for from God. And now it's all about the intention of the prayer. Because why are you praying for the blindness of your enemies? Are you praying for the blindness of your enemies so that you can run away from them? Because it would have been very easy for Elisha to strike them with blindness and then be able to sneak through the enemy lines and, and be able to run away from them. And now the Syrians wouldn't be able to find them because they're blind. It would have been very easy to do that. But let's look at what it says. Let's remember what it says. But then... Instead of Elisha running away, Elisha said, follow me, I will lead you to the man who you are looking for. Are you praying for blindness for your enemy so that you can run away from them or so that you can lead them to what they really need the most? The plan. The plan is important because we can't be introduced to the plan after we've gained the perspective. And the last thing is we have the option to produce, produce the outcome that God is looking for. Because I'm just going to give you guys a brief synopsis of what happens after these verses. I don't have time to walk through them all. So pretty much once Elisha takes them into Samaria, leads them through Samaria, and takes them to the king of Israel. And he prays for them to be restored of their sight so that they are able to see who they are now in front of. And now the Israel king, the king of Israel, asks Elisha, what should we do? Should we kill him? Should we kill him? They're in our hands. The enemy has been delivered into our hands. What should we do? We should kill him, right? And Elisha says, no, no. No, we are not going to kill them. We are not going to do that. We are instead going to throw them a feast. Feast? A feast. We are going to throw them a feast. Because even though the, like the produce, for us to be able to produce the plan, the outcome that the king was looking for is not the outcome that God had in mind. And if we keep reading, after they throw the feast, the Syrians leave the Israelite territory and they didn't attack them again. Are you looking for a short-term goal or a long-term goal? Because through gaining the perspective of God, through prayer, through gaining the plan of God, through prayer, and then being able to produce the plan, through play, through prayer, through looking to God and asking Him, what is the better thing to get done here? Should I kill them or should I throw them a feast? Should I solve this in the short term but then make their empire that much 
angrier so that they come back at, a, back at us with stronger military presence? Or do I solve this in the long term so that they won't ever attack us again? God has a perspective that he wants to give you. He has a plan that he wants to give you and then you will be able to produce that plan through the perspective and the plan that he has given you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this message today. And I hope that it helps you guys see that God is already there. It's already there. It's just a matter of us finding the perspective, finding the plan, and then being able to produce it. I hope you guys enjoyed this message today, and I will see you guys all next week.